Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, I'm Sage. Sage, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You're beautiful. Thank you. Some. Thank you. How long have you been working here for? Two weeks. Oh my gosh, so you're new. I'm super new, yeah. To this brothel or in brothel in general? Brothels in general. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to talk to you. <laughs> I have not talked to someone who's like two weeks in. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Will you show me your room? Absolutely. <gasps> Yay! Sage. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Two weeks in, you already decorated like this? So, um, there's a lot of the decorations that were up, but I made it my own. Like I put up, you know, a lot of the lights and the rugs and stuff like that. This was unexpected. I saw you in the kitchen, but I thought like, I've been in brothels before and when the girls don't get in front of the camera, I think they're trying to avoid me because they don't want to be on camera. So I was with a client for like three hours, like the in your entire duration that, that you got here. Three hour client, that's good. Well, the first hour was um, he booked for a pretty large party. I don't, I can't say the exact amount, but you know, there was bank issues allowing him to take that much out. And then yeah, the other half was actually being in the room. So you're two weeks into working at a brothel, you said? Yeah. How did you find out about brothels? I was living in Reno, Nevada, and um, my husband's, one of his late girlfriends used to work in a brothel, and we got became pretty good friends. And she was like, man, like I really loved working there. I wish I could do it, but you know, now I have kids. And then I moved here to Elko, and we came to this brothel for a bachelor party, and uh, yes, I believe you spoke with Miss Hazel. I'm Hazel. But I totally fell in love with her. I was like, oh my God, girl, like let me take you out on a date and stuff like that. But she was like, you know, like you should come work with me, um, you know, and she, I was hammered, and she sat with me at the bar and helped me fill out my application here and um, a couple of weeks later, you know, I got a call from the owner and I started working here and that was two weeks ago. How long have you been owning this building for? Uh, we, we leased the building, but um, oh, okay, yeah. 2014. And it's you and your mom or is that? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I know. I try to, <laughs> try to bring that up like, you know, to your mom. Hey, um, your name's Kitty. You want to own a brothel? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that works out. Yeah, she pretty much said, fuck you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then she thought about it and, you know, and um, yeah, so she, just the paperwork side, I do the generally running of it. How long have you been here for? I have been here about oh, over six years. You know, I thought I would use this place as a stepping stone. Like, oh, after this small place, I'm gonna go to, you know, the Bunny Ranch or whatever. But I ended up just finding my place here. And I, I do hear very good things about all the other places, but I just feel like this is a fit for me. And I just actually never left. The owners are so nice and I'm just loyal and I love it here. I find most brothels try to be elitist. They want to cater to CEOs and guys in ties. We're a working class brothel, the everyday guy who bleed for their money and come in and work close. I always thought, you know, from being here, I hear all the experiences from all the other girls at all the other houses. And they're not even like bad experiences. They're, they just tell me how much they make. And, and some is like a lot of money, but they have less clients but the clients pay more mm. here we have more clients but they're more like blue collar workers you know they work at the gold mines and, and stuff and so we have more of them and it's just a little bit lower budget sometimes and sometimes guys come from out of state and they pay big money so you just never know who's going to roll through hunters and everything okay so you mentioned being down for Hazel. My series is uh, it's called Our Queer Life. So it's all about queer people and just me exploring different communities and what the queer culture is like there. Do you call yourself queer? I lean more towards men, um, but I am bisexual. Like, um, I would like to explore like, you know, the I would like to be pi pansexual. Have you had a two girl party yet? No, um, I actually had been with my first um, couple, male, female, and that was amazing. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Oh my God. That was the first time I've ever been with a woman, so. Ever? Mm -hmm. Since I was 14, I've been um, a serial monogamous. So I would go from one long-term relationship to the next. You know, now I've kind of been able to do what I want. I used to make fun of guys for not being able to find the clit, but I gotta admit, like, it's pretty hard to find. So. <laughs> I would have no idea how to find it. I would literally be like, what's going on? I do know a working girl who is queer, who has a female partner. And I, I think that she finds it easier to compartmentalize what she does here because there's a less emotional connection with her clients. But then sometimes I think she struggles also because, you know, she's, she's with men and she prefers women. So she has to balance that. It's fascinating. It is. I think it's very fascinating. And, and I think I often, my biggest priority in, in my job is the mental health of the ladies I work with to make sure that they have somebody to talk to and somebody to vent to and that 
they're not doing anything that they don't want to do, mm -hmm. and that they have a community that loves and supports them. Nobody's going to understand what they're going through except for the girl in the room next door. Yeah, and they really have each other. Like, <laughs> a prime example. Like, they all love each other, you know? And it's. <laughs> and this community is that, and that's amazing. And, it's yeah, so other, and so many other brothels, like, they divide the women and they make them compete with each other so they don't have that same camaraderie, and I think it lowers their mental health. How about your family? Do, you, do they know you work here? No. No, I, uh, my dad is very, very, like, old school Asian, you know, from Vietnam. I can't imagine him, you know, liking this. And I used to do lighter sex work, like Cam Girl and OnlyFans, and my mom knew about that. But um, I can't imagine her having an issue with it. I just don't, like, I don't really think it's any of her business. But are you worried about her seeing this video? No. You're okay with it? Yeah. Okay. And I'll take it. Sorry. I'm glad we got that on camera. <laughs> I haven't gotten that on camera yet. Oh, really? Okay, so we'll we'll end we'll, we'll finish this later, right? Hey there, I'm Jasmine. Hi, I'm Hazel. Hi, Lana. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're all gorgeous. I don't know who to pick. Um all I pick all of you. So now you just kinda of chill here and mingle and yeah so um I that, that gentleman much. is yeah. talking to one of the ladies if we end up not coming to agreement if he does not book then he can come back out to the bar and one of us can you know talk to him and approach him and see if like we would be a better fit for what he's looking for if not and she does book then we just go back to our rooms and hang out so that's what you're all waiting for right now is to yeah. see if there's i'm not like hanging out at the bar and hanging out with angela yeah angela has good vibes <laughs> how long have you been working here for um almost a year now you like it i do love it I, it's probably my favorite job. The ladies here are amazing. My first experience at Mustang, and there's a lot of security guards, and then every other place hasn't really been like that. No, we have safety button. Um, in other houses, it will be the ladies. If you're screaming enough, if you press the button, it's gonna be the bartender and the owner. We have safety mm. bugs here, though. Too. Every house has safety bugs. The clientele that comes into yeah. the brothels is different than like the clientele that goes to the streets. That's what it boils down to. That's really an interesting way of putting it. The clients that are looking for illegal escorts is a lot different than the clients that are looking to come to a legal brothel. Right. Because people are coming to legal brothel because it's legal. And right, so it's like and well, they want to feel. I'm sorry. Go, Go ahead, baby. No, you, you, you. We did it together. You. <laughs> they want to feel safe and secure. Yeah. They want to feel mm -hmm. good. Like we want to feel safe and secure. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. We take we take a lot of extra steps to feel safe and secure. And so do they. Like. They and you. Come yes. Here. You both pay. You pay a lot more money to feel safe and secure, and they Correct. pay a lot more money yes. to feel safe and secure. Exactly. When I sat back down with Sage. I was curious what made her and her husband move to Elko from Reno. So you just randomly moved to Elko, not for brothel working? Well, it definitely wasn't random. So I moved to Reno um, four years ago to be with my husband. My husband passed away a couple months ago. I'm it, so sorry. He went out doing what he loved. So that's what matters, right? What do you mean? He went out riding his motorcycle. That's how he passed away. Um, wow, what a sudden... Oh, it was very, very sudden, yeah. Yesterday was actually our one-year anniversary, or one-year wedding anniversary. Today was his birthday. It would have been his birthday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. How is that going for you? How are you handling that? I was having a really hard time, of course, like, you know, dealing with it. Some of his best friends were like, hey, why don't you come out here? You know, we can paint motorcycles, get your mind off of it. So I just began keeping myself distracted and hanging out with people. And then, you know, I started working here and that's been helping a lot. How long has it been since the death? I'm sorry. Um, it's been almost four months. Do you remember that call? I saw him so he was riding to his friend's house that was about a mile from our house and he wasn't texting me back. So I was like, OK, like, I'm going to try calling him. He didn't answer. I tried calling the person that he was supposed to be with, didn't answer, and I started hearing police sirens. And so I like drove my car over there, and he, they were on, he was on the ground, they were trying to resuscitate him. What was going through your head in that moment? I just can't, couldn't believe it, like, so sudden, you know, and it's like your life changes in just a minute. I still can't wrap my head around that, you know? I still have dreams where he comes back, and he's like, yeah, I was just on vacation, you know, or, you know, but. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just taking this all in. Yeah, um, I'm sure it's a little darker than you uh, anticipated. No, but I, 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 it's all part of your journey, and I wonder if that kind of helped dictate where you are today. 
It definitely did. After I, you know, had that conversation with Hazel and, you know, she helped me fill out the application, I told my friend that, you know, I was thinking about doing this. And she's like, girl, like, you need to do it. Like, it's not as intimate with some of the men as you think. Like, you know, you could just turn your brain off just because I'm a very, I need to, usually I'm supposed to have like, I usually have like a really good connection with the person I'm, you know, having sexual intercourse with. But I, I really do have a lot of love for all my clients that I have. It's not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. I actually really, really love being here. Do you feel like there's like a mental toll that you, that takes on you? Like, are you are you figuring out how to mentally, I don't know, handle this? There are some things that, you know, I've, I've learned in the bedroom that I thought were gonna be okay with me. Like excessive kissing, like that's super intimate. Like I, like I think in future I'll be like, okay, light kissing is okay. I can't be making out with you for an hour and a half, you know? I'm still learning like how to build those boundaries with my clients. The grief process is something that fascinates me and how everyone handles grief in such different ways. How has the grief process looked for you? Afterwards, I went through a phase of trying out all these vices, and one of the vices was having sex with random guys off Tinder. I tried all these vices, you know, of course alcohol, of course drugs, sex, like just to get my mind off of my husband and you know, what had happened, um, even if it was just temporarily. And I feel terrible about, it, terrible about it the next day, you know? You try anything you can to just like not think about it. Ever since then, it's just been like suppressing it. It's hard for me to be here without my husband, you know? Um, so I just try to, pretend like it's not happening, put my hand, head, in the, head in the sand. The silver lining of everything is make the best of your time here. You know, I was very work, work driven. I traveled five days a week from store to store and I did only spend two days with my husband and life is just way too short. Like you gotta do what you love. You, you gotta like go out there, you know? Happy birthday to him. Absolutely, happy birthday. Thank you so much for talking to me and being so open. It was beautiful meeting you. It was so nice meeting you. Thank you so much for your time and coming thank, to see us. Thank you for your time. And your time's worth a lot. So the fact that I'm here right now and you you missed a lineup for me. Ugh. Oh, absolutely. It was worth it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, perfect. You did great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. It was fun. I had fun too. You did? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs>